sabay-sabay natin alamin ang mga kaganapan na nangyayari sa ating bansa. Yo, what's up mga kaibigan? This is I Toki po again. Ngayon nandito ulit tayo sa channel ni Pinas News Insider. Dito ulit tayo magbibigay ng komento at reaksyon. Kaya samahan niyo o oh guys, let's go! Ito ang balita ngayon. Mm-hmm. Viral ngayon sa mundo ng social media. Ang Deo Manoy Balitang, isang napakagandang balita. Pangulong Bongbong Marcos, dumalo at nagipagpulong. sa resepsyon na inargunisa ng Asia Development Bank kung saan pag-uusapan na tatalakayin nila ang magagandang programa. Katulad na lamang ng digitalization, overseas development assistance at pag-create ng food stamp na prinopost ng DSWD at first time ito sa ating history. Mukhang matutuloy na ang di umanoy gold deposit na hinihintay ng taong bayan. Pero bago ang lahat, kung bago ka pa lamang sa aming channel. Sa lahat ng hindi pa nakasubscribe mga kaibigan kay Pinas News Insider, mag-subscribe na po tayo at huwag nyo rin pong kalimutan mag-subscribe dito sa aking channel. Please huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at i-click ang notification bell para mas maging updated pa kayo lalo sa lahat pa ng bagong video na i-upload namin. At eto na nga mga kababayan. Nakipagpulong ang Pangulong Bongbong Marcos sa ADP President na si Matsugo Asakawa kung saan tinalakay nila ang magagandang programa sa isang naganap na pagpupulong. Malugod na tinagap ni ADP President Matsugo Asakawa si Pangulong Bongbong Marcos Jr. at kasama ng kanyang mga gabinete. Bago pa ang pagtanggap ay kanilang ang tinalakay. ang mga magagandang programa na nangangailangan ng malaking pondo, ang digitalization, climate change at overseas development assistance, at ang pag-create ng food stamp na prinopost ng DSWD para sa ating mga mahihirap na kababayan. At mula ng sumali ang Pilipinas sa ADP taong 1966, ay naging isa na ang Pilipinas. sa pinakamalaking tumatanggap ng tulong ng Asia Development Bank na nakatanggap ng higit sa 20 billion US dollar sa mga pautang, gawad at technical na tulong mula sa bangko. Ang tulong ng ADB sa Pilipinas ay sumusuporta sa malawakan na hanay ng mga hakbangin sa pag-unlad, kabilang ng pagpapaunlad ng ating infrastruktura, pagbabawas ng kahirapan, edukasyon at kalusugan, at pamamahala sa panganib ng kalamidad. At hanggang ngayon, ang Asia Development Bank ay nananatiling pangunahing pinagmumula ng pagpupondo para sa pagunlad ng Pilipinas, kasama ang iba pang multilateral institution at bilateral na donor. At kung ating matatandaan, ang ADP ay inaugurate pa sa panahon ng ama ni Pangulong Bongbong Marcos na si Ferdinand Marcos Sr. Kaya naman madali lang sa panahon ng administrasyon ng mga Marcos ngayon na ma-approve ang mga programa na ipipinans ng Asia Development Bank dahil kilala na po talaga ng ating former President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. At ngayon ay si Pangulong Bongbong Marcos na naman ang ating maaasahan para tuloy-tuloy po ang serbisyo at programa ng ating mahal na Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Dahil nga sa balitang ito, hindi na napigilan ng marami sa ating mga kababayan na magbigay ng kanilang hinaingat komento sa mundo ng social media. At ayon pa sa kanila, hindi binabalita sa lahat ng mainstream media itong magandang balita na ito para mapanood na talagang mahirap nating mga kababayan dahil lalong mamahalin ng ating Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Good job to our beloved President Bongbong R. Marcos. Ayos, tuloy-tuloy na talaga ang pagyabong ng ating mamamayang Pilipino. Mabuhay ka po, Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Hindi talaga nagkamali ang taong bayan sa pagpili sa'yo. Naway samahan ka ng puong may kapal. For sure, yung mga antay Marcos, may masasabi na naman na tatamad-tamad at hindi ito trabaho para sa kanila. Ang mga inggit-pikit. 
Let the Ampalayas be better for life. Yabang tayo, mas nagiging positibo ang pananaw sa future kasi nakikita natin ang pagbabago na magaganap sa bansa. Let's continue to pray for our president and co- Thank you, uh, uh, Finance Secretary Ben Jokno and all cabinet members who are here present. Uh, president Tasakawa, you know, this is uh, uh, the, the most that we have. We don't have cabinet meetings with the entire cabinet, but we could have it today because the entire cabinet uh, has shown up, which just uh, goes to show uh, the, the, the importance and the priority that we put to uh, the partnership between ADB and the government. And of course, uh, President Tasakawa and uh, the officials of the Asian Development Bank, my fellow workers in government, and our all important partners in the private sector. Uh, and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. I thank you, thank, I thank the Asian Development Bank and its leadership for this gesture that uh, which I wholeheartedly accept in behalf of the Filipino people. We gather today at a propitious time. Just a few days ago, the World Health Organization officially declared that COVID-19 is no longer a public health emergency of international concern. While the declaration does not mean that we abruptly abandon our universal health protocols, it certainly gave the world the reassurance that perhaps the worst is over. Thankfully, because of swift breakthroughs in virology and vaccinology, communities were able to build effective response systems while humanity was able to boost its immune system. With this development, we can now refocus our plans and priorities and train our sides with renewed vigor, carefully guided by the stinging lessons of the pandemic, we can now refocus our priorities on the development of our economy and the betterment of ordinary, the lives of ordinary Filipinos. When I met with the Board of Governors of ADB last September, just three months since my assumption of office, I highlighted the need for our country to safely navigate through the waters of the post-pandemic world and in that way firmly anchor our economy, not just on the new normal, but on the better normal. The pandemic did not blur our national vision that was already very clear to us even before it supervened. Our goal remains to be the same as in pre-pandemic circumstances. Our goal is still to evolve our economy into one that is defined by sustainability, climate resilience, responsiveness, and of course, inclusivity. I also spoke about my administration's eight-point socioeconomic agenda which laid the blueprint for the Philippine Development Plan for 2023 to 2028. Built on a transformative agenda to lift off from the economic setbacks of the pandemic, the plan aims to achieve economic prosperity, inclusivity, and resilience through the two-pronged approach, developing and protecting the capabilities of individuals and of families, and transforming production sectors to generate more quality jobs and competitive products. To facilitate the whole transformation process, these must be firmly implanted on the foundation of an enabling government environment that encompasses key aspects and sectors, just such as peace and justice, infrastructure, inclusive finance, good governance, and climate and disaster resilience. We say all hands on deck in order to make the plan work. Whole of government and whole of society approaches, public-private partnerships, international collaborations shall be adopted as necessary. We will engage our tried and tested and dependable partners and allies to help us out in this that uh, can only be described as a monumental exercise. Magnificently perched on its permanent, permanent site here on our home soil, the ADB has always been a steadfast ally for nearly six decades now, ever reliable and unparalleled in its developmental assistance programs that have spanned across many, many political cycles. In my nine-month tenure thus far, there are already three strategic programs that have been signed with ADB, and there are many more in the pipeline. All these calculated to strongly backstop our pursuit of high priority developmental goals. Moreover, as we were informed, we 
await the release of the country partnership strategy for 2024 to 2029, which shall clearly spell out the ADB's recommended medium-term development agenda for the Philippines. Guided by the theme of investing in climate, Filipinos and the future, it appears to tie in quite nicely with the Philippine Development Plan. We note the theme's strong emphasis on climate and its intimate relation to the people and to our future. According to the 2022 World Bank report, climate change will continue to pose a threat to the Philippines. There is now a likely, high likelihood of the El Nino phenomenon, which we are pre preparing for as we speak, that is on top of the dreaded big one. Our country recently topped the World Risk Index 2022, which means that we have been found to have the highest disaster risk among the 193 countries in the planet. A uh, highly undesirable distinction that we somehow have come into. In spite of these, certain things have remained constant, such as the geographical fact that the Philippines still lies along the typhoon belt and the ring of fire in the Pacific. But uh, set against the backdrop of all these worries and realities and statistics, the whole point is that the climate change agenda is compelling, not only for the Philippines, but for that matter, the rest of the world. Our options are limited. We must mitigate. We must adapt. And if we do not do that, we must suffer. As the climate expert has warned us so many, so many years ago, but somehow, the world did not listen. If we do not act, climate change can, will, and already is unleashing nature's fury upon our communities and our people. Cognizant of all these, we have strategically integrated the climate agenda into the plan. As we ramp up annual public infrastructure spending to 6% of GDP, consistent with the Build Better More program, we will incorporate the elements of sustainability, climate resilience, and disaster proofing in all phases of societal and infrastructural planning, design, construction, up to operation and maintenance. It will be implemented in our water supply, in our sanitation, energy, and transportation systems, including agri and food production and many other essential areas. Climate change will be the lodestar for our integral national policies and investment decisions. In keeping with our solid partnership that we have had for decades, we will look to the ADB for crucial developmental intervention in these critical areas. As the climate bank of the Asia and the Pacific, the ADB has proven its reliability in extending strategic financing and technical assistance for climate responsive projects. The Philippines stands to greatly benefit from this mutually beneficial relationship with the ADB. We are aware of the responsibilities that this relationship carries with it. But we will re-echo my father's words during the ADB inauguration some 57 years ago. We will meet those responsibilities. We will ensure that the plans and projects are stringently and timely and are timely executed. We will also ensure judicious utilization of the loans and other technical assistances that are provided to the country. As we carry forward to the concept of better normal under the post-pandemic circumstances, our vision for the Philippines is for it to be able to provide a comfortable, secure life to its citizens, for us to be able to be self-sufficient in basic needs and essential services, sustainable in our strategies, vibrant industries and investment propelling our economy. It is our continuing and collective hope that the ADB will continue to be there by our side to lend its support throughout our transformative journey. So once again, let us celebrate the more years of fruitful relationship between the Philippines and the Asian Development Bank. Thank you all for all that you have done in the many years, and I thank you in anticipation for all that we will be doing together in the coming years. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, and good morning. At yun, nga... At yun nga po mga kaibigan, dito po nagtatapos ang ating reaction video. Muli ako po si I2K ng Sundalo ng Dunggalo. Maraming maraming salamat sa patuloy na pagsuporta. Yeah, peace out. Happy New Year.